I've got a crack in my new house, which is good for you. But it's bad for me because I need to sort it out. It's good for you because I can explain exactly why this has occurred and hopefully you can avoid it in the future if you're ever having your house built for you. Or if you have to fix it, so you can have a look at me, have a crack at it. Right, let's put this into context. I had this built by a main contractor two years ago and uh, it's lucky that I've left it this long because I've only just seen the cracks and if I would have had it rendered, then it would have come all the way through. Now, of course, I trusted the main contractor and his brickies. Uh, I gave him the plans, but unfortunately they wasn't read properly and I also didn't read them. So maybe it's kind of my fault that I didn't pick them up on it, but I did a query with the brickies about expansion gaps etc and they said that it, it you didn't really need any and it wasn't in the plans and then i didn't think to check the plans to see that it actually was in there and it said that i should have the recommended expansion gaps as and when you needed them but obviously that didn't happen so we'll start with this wall this is east facing this is the one that i first noticed and the crack it goes from the corner here, down there, carries on. And then it stops there. This is where the damp course is. Uh, there's no cracks in the bricks there. And then I've got uh, trench blocks for the rest of the way down to the foundation. There's no cracks in this. So it's concentrated on the block wall. And then you won't be able to see the top bit because I can't get high enough. But there's a crack that goes from here and then it travels up there so the very first thing you see there there's your perp bang on the end there is your perp bang on the end that is bad practice it should overlap so if your brickies want to do that say no can you not do that please because it's just it naturally creates a weak point it's exactly the same as when you plaster the board round and you go all the way around the corner you don't put your joints on the end so because it doesn't go all the way through the foundation, there's no foundation or, or structural issues. This is purely down to thermal movement. This is the opposite side. These are firm lights, but there's no cracks here. And there's no cracks up there. There's no cracks there. And none around here. According to NHBC, you should have thermal movement joints on this type of block work uh, every seven and a half to nine meters. Now, from there to there, isn't that long that's probably only about five i think it is or just under five uh, the issue is that block work is tied into this block work here which is then obviously tied all the way across and that block works tied into that block work and then you've got that block work there so i think it almost class itself as one unit and the total length of the building is about 16 meters so i should have had at least one somewhere so on this side we've got the bifolds this crack comes from there so just above the bricks it hasn't gone through the bricks yet from there and it goes all the way up to the top and then for these bits obviously there's not much either side, but that one is cracked down there. That's just in obviously the perp. That perp, it looks like it wants to go. Obviously that's bad practice. That's in the wrong place really. This one, that one's gone there. Off the lintel, end of lintel, that's cracked there. All right, so my south side, this is fine. Uh, bearing in mind, that's a short run, that's a short run that is tied into this but clay brickwork you need expansion after every 10 to 12 meters this side uh, you can see it's slightly stepped back from the main area main i'll call it the barn because it used to be a barn and that's how it was built um yeah so this run is about 15 and a half but i've got no expansion gaps in there when i was talking to the bricklayers originally i said well, what do the windows or the uh, French doors there does that count as a expansion gap and they said yes but I don't think it does I really should have had one somewhere on this wall I only need one maybe I could have popped it there 
and then that would have been one section and that would have been another section but this is west facing and there's no cracks in it at all it's fine and this is the north end oh i'm getting stung uh yeah that's all block work that's fine that's fine but i might as well tell you about the inside as well technically i should have had expansion joints in some of these walls as well so the blocks in this main area uh, they are all 140 so that thick and then for this bit over here they're only standard 100 and then in that bit over there they're only standard 100. Uh, I don't know whether that's going to make a difference in terms of the thermal mass and the thermal expansion of it but from that still there to there that is less well, it's six metres, so in thermal lines you're supposed to have expansion in every six metres. That means the opposite side there to there where that's still, that is six metres, so that should be fine. This one in here, that is eight metres, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that should have had one somewhere. From the still there over to the end, uh, that's quite a run. So I would say that's nine, maybe 10 meters. That should have had one somewhere in this wall, I think. So that wall there, that's got a good chance of cracking because that effectively goes from here. It might happen up there, I don't know. If, so from there down to there, on the opposite side of that wall, that's quite long, quite big. What do you reckon? Is it going to crack at some point? I'm going for wet plaster straight on. It will be meshed. This wall. This is the 100 mil block. And in theory, it should have had three joints in it. Okay, the end wall. Uh, it's less than six meters side to side. But again, it's locked into this one and it's locked into the other one. So I don't think that that counts. Um, unless you've got expansion in the corner or something. But as a result of that, this one, you see the crack, is it gonna, there you go. It started there. It goes there, across there, down there, across there, down there, across there, and then down there. Same on the window next to it. This one's cracked there, 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 there. Oh, just go back to this one. It's starting there. It wants to go. Next window across. Starts there. Comes here, 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 here. <laughs> uh, next one is there. It goes there. Crack all the way down to there. Uh, this one, same. You get the idea, didn't you? Um, that one's fine over there. Oh, I've got a, another couple of cracks in these ones as well. And the reason why I'm dealing with it now is because I've got the chance to deal with it now. Thank God I hadn't. Oh, well, thank God I'm really bloody slow. So that means that none of this has been done yet i'll put a link in the description from nhbc all about expansion joints and where you should have them but i'll quickly show you what my situation is and another way that where you can potentially avoid it from occurring in the first place on my build i'm having vertical larch cladding at the top that will be off of battens and there's going to be a black membrane behind that with shadow gaps in between so this section up here doesn't necessarily matter as much because it will be waterproof from the membrane if the crack gets bigger or anything it will be fine from here downwards i'm going to have render that's going to stop at the brick so if i would have had this rendered already that crack would have come through straight through there this part over here that is going to be fully rendered so i will need to address it around the windows over there so on this side, because that crack is up there, that's going to be covered by the membrane and the cladding. So in theory, I could leave that and there's not that much of a problem. My plan is to stitch this so it will strengthen it and hopefully I won't have any problems. I did ask on a Facebook group what they thought about it and what they would do. There's quite a few people that said I should just grind it out and then put an expansion gap there and then the renderers will do the same. I think that that would look shit and according to NHBC you shouldn't be having expansion gaps there. It should be in a continuous wall like down the side there. You shouldn't run it next to your windows so I won't be doing that. A couple of people said about meshing it and doing silicon render because silicon render can stretch. 
Uh, I won't do, be doing that as well because I won't be doing silicon render. I very much doubt anyway. It's probably going to be sand and cement. At that point, I was just thinking I'm still going to stitch it. I've got a stitching kit. That's what we're going to be doing today. There was a professional plaster on there, a bit of a flash bloke, and he said, like, he's got a little bit of YouTube and stuff. He said he would definitely stitch it. He said that he's tried in the past with silicon render, he's tried mesh, and it still cracked through. So he said, do everything, everything that you possibly can, S stitch it, mesh it, silicon render. That's the only way that you can potentially stop it coming through the render. Now, I believe with silicon render, I think you do that like plastic mesh. A few people said to do EML, and you wouldn't believe what I've got. I've got EML. This is expanded metal lath. This is stainless steel. Um, this is what I used on my loft conversion. So my plan is to stitch it and then I will put the EML on at some point in the future and then the renderer will go over it and then hopefully it will stay in place. Now, I'm thinking, because I'm doing that side, if I strengthen that, that side might go. So I've got five bars. I'm going to stick three in there and two in there. I'm asking your opinion, would you grind a slot, a channel through here and then stick the helicoil boys, the bars in and then it all keep it together, do you understand? Or should I just do the EML and then if I do the EML all the way around there and then the same around there, would that just work on its own? Few of you might be thinking, what is a helicoil bar? Well, I'll show you. This is a helicoil bar. So these are stainless steel. I've got five, and for my particular kit, I've got a gun, and this is a polyester chemical anchor resin. You know I said about putting a bar across the bottom, outside. Should I, should I do it on the inside as well? Should I go through here and just grind out a channel, just to link that across? stop that cracking i don't i don't know whether that's worth it or not is it going to get my nerves if it does crack eventually this will be meshed but with the plastic mesh i think uh, unless i do it eml inside as well so these bars are a meter long and i'm gonna pull out the mortar and you go 500 mil either side and that's effectively going to tie that side into that side and when it wants to expand that way uh, these coils, it, it won't be able to because it will have to pull and it will have to go upwards and downwards. Now that, that's pretty much impossible once you've got everything tied in. But rather than doing this retrospectively, you can do it as you're building. So you can do bed reinforcement. Not something that I've ever heard of before, never experienced it. You may not know as well, but now you do. So if you're getting your house built, round your windows, uh, possibly your doors as well, at the top at least, because you wouldn't be able to have it at the bottom. Well, you might be able to have it at the bottom. Uh, get bed reinforcement. So it's basically uh, bars that go all the way across. And you'll go like two down here at the bottom and two up the top, and then that will stop your bloody wall from cracking around the windows. Right, let's give this a crack then. Uh, I'll talk you through the equipment that I've got. If there's anything that's available, I'll leave it in my Amazon page thing. Uh, there's be a link in the description. First of all, I've got my angle grinder. This is the smallest and cheapest one, whatever. They're all pretty much the same. It doesn't really matter. I did buy this separate. Uh, I got it on eBay. It's like a guard where you can attach your hoover. Um, I'm sure there's one on Amazon, so hopefully I've linked that. This is a mortar raking disc. So you will need one of them. Uh, obviously I've got my chemical helicor, helicor set. There's plenty of these about. Uh, I'm gonna hook it up to my Hilti hoover to reduce the dust, hopefully, and don't forget your PPE. First, I'll use my angle grinder to rake out these bits. I'm gonna go a meter, so 500 each way from this. I'm gonna do that one, I'm gonna do that one, and I'm gonna do that one. If I could be bothered, I would replace these blocks. But that just seems like a massive effort considering it's gonna be covered up anyway. 
<laughs> and then over this side, even though it's not cracked, I think it probably will once I've locked that side in. So I will do, let's say that one there and that one there, because I've only got five bars. I'm going to break 30 mil deep, roughly 30 mil. And I'll best protect that just in case something flicks off and then smashes that window door. These particular bars are just under six mil. My raking disc was six mil, but you just need to go up and down a little bit, maybe go all the way across and then go across again, and then that'll open it up just enough for these. There's loads of dust in that. You've got a couple of ways. You can blow it out, you can suck it out, you can jet it out with water. If you haven't bought one of these yet, I don't know why, link in the description. Right, now we need to go with our chemi fix. A lot of these kits come with like this grout stuff that you have to mix up. And then um, you have to use this massive like grout gun or mortar gun. But that just seems like aggro. This seems, well, I'm assuming this is like 10 times easier. How's this going? That way. There we go. It just mixes up the resin like round here. That is about eight mil, so make sure you can get that end in. We're just gonna lay a bed in the back. And just need to push these bars in. I've pushed it in so it's about half covered. And then we go some more on top. Now for this, obviously you can leave enough gap for putting mortar at the front if you need to, if it's on brick. I don't need to worry about that because it's being rendered. So I can pretty much fill up all of these. Uh, I've just put the extra bit down the crack just in case if I don't get round to getting this rendered this year. I don't want any water getting in that crack and then if it freezes, I'll end up, obviously it will just expand even more. I'll probably need to do the same up top as well, unless I do clad it this year. But I might just put some like silicon in there. It's, it's not gonna make a difference. It's just literally to stop that water going in. Shit. Oh. Well, don't take your time with this stuff then. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, it's gone off. It's gone off already. Can't get that lump off. That's it. Uh, I've got another tube of chemical resin somewhere. I might just go and get that just to finish it off. I used up my other chemical resin. That's why it's a different color on top. The question is, can I get this lump off that I left there? I'm gonna use angle grinder. This one's cordless. We'll see whether it works. I've done it right. That's a diamond disc. There you go. Job's a good one. I would say if he was doing that with brick instead, then you probably want to replace any cracked bricks and then probably go 40 mil deep and then you've got a chance for the mortar in front. Like I said, I didn't really need to bother with this one. It was roughly about 30-ish mil deep, maybe 32. I reckon that will sort it, fingers crossed. Uh, for the expanding metal lath, I will probably fix it round with concrete screws. If you're interested in seeing that, that's gonna happen way in the future. So make sure you subscribe and push that bell notification because I don't necessarily do videos on a regular basis. Question is, do I do a similar thing on the inside just in case?